so now we're in the Alhambra Palace. Now this was the uh, last refuge of the Muslims in Al Andalus. They fled here because they were forced out of the cities of Cordoba and Seville and the smaller centers of Arcos and and, uh, and Asija and other places. And they became they came here, of course, with all of their talent and their genius. And they built this in the Kingdom of Granada, this amazing, sophisticated display. But that's the key thing for us to remember as Muslims. It was a symbol of power. It was a display of power. All of these things, these animals, the sophistication, the artwork, the lavishness, we, we run the risk, of course, and we see it here, of turning elegance into excess, of turning elegance into extravagance. And Allah reminds us in the Quran, وَلَا تُسْرِفُوا In all cases, do not go to an excess. Do not overindulge. What happens? It became a symbol of power. But symbols don't last, ideals last. And so the symbol of power now, Muhammad ibn Ahmar was the same person in the year 1212, crushing defeat in the Battle of Las Navas de Tolosa. But in 1262, if I remember, he built this Alhambra Palace, but it remained as a symbol. So therefore, the symbol that was taken from here was then transferred to the Christian kings who used the same symbol because they kept it as a palace for their own liking. And what remains for us, of course, are the ideals and the values, and that's the key thing to remember. So although we do marvel at the genius and the sophistication, the artistry and the mathematical precision of all of their artwork, what runs through in every single wall is that motto, La Ghaliba illallah. There's no victor except Allah. And it came almost as a kind of a desperate remark or desperate motto at the end when everything was almost lost because they realized la ghaliba illallah there's no victor except Allah and that's true but the point is this we learn we learn about the beauty of Al-Andalus we learn about the beauty and the sophistication artistry genius of the Muslims but at the same time we also learn the lesson there is a danger in excess there is a danger in extravagance our model is a city of Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam and that was pure and it was based upon a value system a man came in Mecca Mecca he began shaking in the Prophet's presence and the, and the Prophet says to him Howin alayk fa inni lastu bi malik just relax I'm not a king I'm not a king even though he was the best of Allah's creation I'm not a king inni ibn ibn imra min Quraysh kana ta'kul qadid I am the son of a woman from Quraysh who used to eat meat you know salty dried meat on the floor in the desert showing him I'm not selling you an image an architecture, a building, I'm selling you an ideals. I'm telling you feed the poor, I'm telling you obey your parents, worship Allah, don't make shirk in Allah. These are the things that Muslims were known for. Not necessarily the amazing splendor of architecture, although it truly, truly is an amazing achievement in artwork. Um, but we remind ourselves that's not what is defines what Islam is. So it's a beautiful being here, amazing seeing all of this and a lot of lessons for us. And this is penultimate. Tomorrow, inshallah, we'll be in the al Pajaris Mountains, the rebellion, the fight back, the what Muslims did to hold on to their remnant of their faith and their dignity. So, inshallah, I'll see you in the mountains of al Pajaris.